So Venice is flooded. What? Well, of course it's flooded. Venice is always flooded, you know? Is the bear a Catholic? Does the Pope shit in the forest? Of course it's flooded. It's always flooded. No, no, no. Look, there is a big storm that has affected northern Italy, which has resulted in a surge wave flood, which has totally drowned 75% of Venice. Look at the pictures. Those people on their romantic honeymoon wading around, or those restaurant uh, customers currently sitting with their underpants in the water. And that water does not look very clean, people. But look, it's actually a sad story because uh, Venice itself has got a lot of problems with um, rising water levels and slipping. It's basically sinking. And it's not only because of the water and the pumping and the building and the draining and the dredging. It's because some of the tectonic plates underneath Italy are shifting and basically Venice is busy sliding into the ocean. So it's one of those tourist sites which is very heavily visited, very small and very, very full of tourists. And you know what? If you want to see it, you better go there now because it's not going to be there for very much longer. <coughs> Did you know that uh, Imalathleni in Mpumalanga has got the worst air quality in the entire world? That's right. Someone was doing a test using, you know, geosynchronous satellites and they discovered that the air over Malathleni has the highest levels of nitrogen dioxide anywhere on the planet. Jeez. What a shocker. And did you know, as an aside, that this town, which used to be called Witbank, which is now called Malathleni, you know, Malathleni means the place of coal. That's right, isn't it, Bright? <laughs> Thank you very much. Place of coal. What a beautiful name for a town. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> But why is the air so dirty? Well, you have to look no further than our friends at the National Power Utility, ESCOM, because set on the landscape around Imalathleni are a series of their coal-fired power stations, which generate electricity for the entire country. This week, it made the news that Kendall Power Station, which is one of the largest and newest in the area, has in fact been chundering thousands and thousands of tons of unprocessed ash muck into the sky why because the electrostatic precipitators at the top of the flues you know from the furnace when they burn the coal all the ash and the muck that goes up into the air there's equipment at the top which is supposed to remove the dust before it blows all over the high felt that's not been working for three months so all of those well-paid idiots at ESCOM can't even get the existing power station equipment to work. And no, no, they can't turn that one off because all the other power stations are broken. So they need that one. Otherwise, they'd be load shedding. <laughs> My God. Damn, these are tough times in China. You know, everyone's favorite new kid on the block is currently getting a little in the face, not only from Mr. Trump. All sorts of economic slowdowns and other issues and you know of course that they have their problems with regard to rapid infrastructure development and unintended consequences consider this one for example this amazing structure which is uh, known as fast well that's the acronym and it's for 500 foot astronomical space telegraph or something the chinese word for it is uh, heavenly eye it's a 500 meter aperture radio telescope, which was built in this incredible uh, mountainous area of uh, southern China. And it's designed, you know, to look up into the night sky and it's got all sorts of fabulous features. It cost $180 million to develop. Ooh. Now, only problem is it's quite remote. And if you work there, you're not allowed to use a cell phone because, you know, it would interfere with the radio signals. And as a consequence, They've not been able to uh, recruit anyone to work there. The pay is low, of course, as well. So ironically, this particular piece of infrastructure designed to search for aliens has not been very effective in finding any humans either. <laughs> Parkinson's disease, a terrible, terrible affliction, which uh, is affecting more and more people because, of course, humans are living much longer, much, much longer than they used to. But as they get older, they're affected by conditions like this. It's a degenerative disease of the central nervous system, which results in progressive shaking, instability, difficulty with moving, and in time, loss of confidence, depression, dementia. Well, in interesting research published this week, a, a research institute in the United States of America has come up with a startling, startling piece of information. And that is that it is possible that the appendix, the appendix, that most useless of all human organs, is in fact responsible for the onset of Parkinson's disease because it secretes certain malformed proteins which find their way into the bloodstream and then eventually into the central part of the brain 
where it starts to basically fall in on itself and cause this particular problem. Why did they discover this? Because they were doing some statistical research amongst kids who had had appendectomies when they were much younger and found that they were more than 25% less likely to contract Parkinson's disease later in life. So this got me thinking, and a couple of other people too, that uh, you know maybe next time when you're going in for some, I don't know, cosmetic surgery, tummy tuck, or some other thing that requires uh, general anesthetic, why not ask the doctor just to whip out your appendix as well? Delay the onset of Parkinson's when you get older. Not a bad idea. Any takers? Yes? No? 